Welcome to a very special and fun episode of Video Mojo. My name is John Leland, and I want to welcome Liz Wilcox to Video Mojo. Hi, Liz. How are you doing today? Hey, John. Hey, friends. I am doing so great. I am really excited about this conversation. Yeah, so Liz, if you don't, have not found her yet in the myriad forests of the internet, she is the fresh princess of email marketing. I found her because she has Video Mojo, and we're going to talk about Video Mojo for sure, but she she specializes and has like this laser focus on helping people to build relationships with email marketing, find their voice through email marketing, to build their communities with email marketing. And those are all things near and dear to my heart. Uh, did I leave anything important? You're a keynote speaker and you have an amazing array of courses and programs. I signed up for your $9 a month, incredibly reasonable community. So I look forward to participating over the next year. And other than that, you and I are meeting each other in in real time for the first time. Yeah, so hopefully I don't make it awkward, um, but I, th I think it'll be really fun. And I think the only thing missing is that, uh, like John with video, I like to make email really fun, actionable, and practical for my audience. So buckle up, friends. Buckle up. So let's buckle up with Video Mojo, because I one of the other things that attracted me, you know, full disclosure, I think you were promoted through the Ecamm Live software community. And I saw you and then I connected with you. There are a couple of things we'll talk about in terms of, uh, I think we have a common commitment to joy and fun, but why are you so committed to video? And it apparently, correct me if I'm wrong, video is really a big component of how you build community and, and communicate with everyone. Yeah, so just like email, video is just a little bit more of an intimate connection for lack of a better term, right? You can see my face, hear my voice, uh, get a feel for my mannerisms and my facial expressions, and your audience can do the same for you. So with video for my business, I knew it was going to be, you know, one of those basic foundational bricks I had to lay because I knew when somebody could see me on the screen, you know, I could make an impression. And when you can make an impression, that's when your network starts to grow, uh, your conversions uh, get better, and, you know, your business gets stronger. Have you ever experienced resistance to video? Because I know a lot of people have a hard time having the courage even to show their face. And I'm, I'm a big fan of show your face. I totally agree with what you just said, but did you go through any resistance in order to get where you are today? Absolutely. So something that you might not guess uh, when you Google Liz Wilcox is that I was actually selectively mute until around the age of seven. That means I really wasn't able to speak to anyone outside of my mother. Um, I don't know. I can't really explain it. You'll have to Google it later, but it's, it's a really weird thing. And so when I started my business, being so visible was so scary. I grew up really shy, very insecure. And when I heard, you know, oh, video was the thing. When I started my business, it was 2016. I think Facebook Live was brand new in 2017 and you know everybody came out of the woodwork video 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 and I thought oh gosh cringy I'm, I'm a great writer I like to hide behind my words but I think they're on to something I think if I can show my face if I can show uh you know just kind of how silly and awkward I am I think I might be able to connect with other silly awkward people um and then we can really get moving and so just like in the real world I faced resistance against being seen and showing my true colors I did the same thing with video and I realized, well, my real life, the more I became myself, the more successful I became. Maybe the same is true with video. So I started going live back in the day when I had an RV travel blog. I no longer own that uh, blog. But anyway, started going live, doing lots of videos. I hosted a digital summit. And I think, you know, other than the real world application or, uh, you know, comparison, I think the thing that really got me going was that I just realized, you know, I'm not the president of the United States. I'm not this huge figure. If I make a mistake with my video, if I look kind of silly, it's not gonna be the end of the world and it's definitely not gonna be the end of my business. And so once I kind of, you know, shifted my mind around that, uh, the more I was able to get visible. And the last thing I'll say about that is, you know, we're recording this, it's the end of 2023. Up until about six months ago, I was still experiencing hives when I would 
would do video. Uh, when I, you know, John said we just met each other, right? I would get really nervous. My face would get red. And it was just something I just had to keep working on until it eventually went away. So I would literally have a physical response and resistance to video, but I knew it was the thing that was gonna help me relate to people, help me make those quick connections. So eventually, you know, the hives got smaller, uh, you know, the face got more natural color until all of that just disappeared about six months ago. Wow, that's an incredible journey. That's, a, that's one of the most intense video experiences that I've heard, and I really salute your courage to keep going through through all that even physical symptom manifestation of it. And the part of it that I want to pick up on, though, that I just love is the willingness to be silly. Uh, you know, like I said, I have a core, you know, I, I'm doing something called the Video Mojo Creativity Sandbox is a program that I'm delivering now. And, and really, the, I did a whole framework for it. And the core of it, the heart of it is joy. And, you know, you seem to have a willingness to play not concerned, as you just expressed, about being silly and whatever. And I think all of that vulnerability makes you more attractive and helps you build an audience. Is that, is that kind of like, besides just the fact that it's fun to be silly? How does, how does that work in your head? I think what John said is absolutely right. It's it helps you connect with people. Um, if you're in business, you know people. You've got to know that people want to buy from people they trust. And so, you know, John used the word vulnerable, but vulnerability isn't you know like oh my gosh, I'm showing up with hives and I'm sharing this really dark story about myself. Being vulnerable can be as simple as just being silly, not being afraid to make a mistake, not being afraid to stumble over your words, not being afraid to you know. Know, am I am I on? Am I on? All right. Oh, I'm on mute. Hang on. You know all those silly little mistakes, and not being afraid to laugh at yourself and understand mistakes are inevitable, but they actually endear your customer to you. Uh, there's a reason why gigantic brands like Nike and the like spend hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, pretending that they're a human, right? <laughs> like, you know, they've got a social media team. They spend millions on ads during the Super Bowl uh, that show diversity and social justice campaigns, et cetera, et cetera, because they're trying to endear you to the brand, right? But you are your brand, right? Especially if you're doing videos, uh, you know, people are associating your business with you. And so, you know, you don't have to spend hundreds of millions of dollars. You can just be a real person. You can just be who you are and, you know, unapologetically or uh, apologetically if that's who you are. Oh, sorry, I, I forgot my line or, oh, sorry, let me stick to the notes. Oh, sorry. You know, if that's you, be who you are. Don't be afraid to be silly. Don't be afraid to play with it because eventually you're going to land on something you really like. Yeah, I, and that willingness to experiment and make mistakes is just so key. It comes up again and again and again. So let's pivot towards email. Fundamentally, we're talking about connecting with your audience and building community, building prospects, like you said, having people get to know and trust you. Uh, how do you do that voice-wise? And I'll, I'll even give you an example because one of the other things that uh, got me to sign up for your uh, community, by the way, is, is you know, is you push back on one of my email subject lines. I, you asked to see some of my emails and you said, quote, I think it's too YouTube SEO and not you enough, not personal enough. You know, I remember that. Fle <laughs> flesh, flesh that out for me. And, and, and how do people yeah. use email to connect? You know, what, what's your strategy there? Yeah, so with email, it's just a human to human connection. I'm talking to John. And just by being myself, you know, maybe he could have taken that the wrong way of me saying, hey, you know, I think this subject line could be better. He could have said, oh, well, what do you know, lady? And unsubscribed from me, right? And that would have been okay because then he wouldn't have been my person. But instead, John said, oh, yeah, I'm ready to learn. That makes sense. Let me adjust and see what happens. Let me find the result here. And so that's what we're doing. We're just human to human. Even with video, you know, one of the reasons video works so well is because it appears human to human, right? It's Liz talking to John, John talking to his YouTube audience, which includes me, right? It's that very human experience. Email is very much the same. And to John's question about how do you find your voice in email? Uh, you know, how, how do you translate what is so easily done with video onto an email? And 
I just do three things. Number one, showcase a little bit of personality. Of course, that's much simpler to do with video because you can put you know, pictures in the background. You can see I'm wearing rainbow glasses and a beanie that says something about my personality. But within your emails talking about, oh, this is my example. Oh, I love the 90s. I have, you know, a flair for fun. Things like that can showcase the personality in your emails. The second thing is to share your vision for your potential students, view and viewers, clients, etc. So what it is it you want for them? For me, I want you to make money with email marketing. That's all I care about. That's why John is, I don't even know if he had signed up for any of my programs yet, but I was answering his questions because I really do believe in this vision for him, right? I want him to make money with email marketing. That's my vision. Share that within your emails to make that connection of, oh yes, Liz, she's the one for me. She's gonna help me with email. Oh, John, yeah, I need to get my mojo back when it comes to video. I find I'm going through the motions. I, I need to have more fun so I can make better connections. John's the one for me, right? And so you can do that by sharing the vision over and over, telling your readers, hey, this is what I want for you and this is what I'm doing to help you get it. And the last thing are your values. And this is not to say spew your politics everywhere. Nobody wants that. But there are certain things that drive the way you do business. There are certain principles that guide you, right? Share those within your emails. For example, John and I both have a value of having fun, right? We believe, you know, if you're going to do it, you might as well have fun with it, right? That's a value that we share. He's giving us the thumbs up right now. And you know, another value that I have is inclusivity. It's something I learned uh, in my background in education. And so a lot of the things, you know, John said, oh, I'm in Liz's $9 a month club. It's $9 a month, not because it's cheap. It's because I value inclusivity. It's because I value you. I think everyone has the right to learn. And so I share that in my emails. This is why the price is the price. So again, a little bit of personality, your vision for your clients, readers, students, whatever you call them, um, and a little bit of values is gonna help connect you to those other humans who are eventually going to you know, watch your videos, buy your products, etc. Awesome, I love the structure that you, know, that you have three key concepts there that's obviously well thought out and not something that just happened today, right? That's, that's something you've been working on. And, you know, and I'm doing the same thing in terms of a framework. Well, I want to come back. You busted me on my subject line. You know, what makes a good subject line? Because I, you know, I certainly am a proponent of it's crucial, right? If people don't open the email, who cares? What They're never even going to see the content. So what, what goes into making a good subject line? Well, I'll give you the answer. And then I want to give a follow-up and challenge you and at you at home listening to think about more than the subject line. So the subject line itself should just be written like you're writing a friend. So write your email and then think, what is the gist of this email? What am I trying to say? And if I was just sending this to John or just sending this to Liz, what would I put in the subject line? For example, if I was talking about, uh, you know, hey, this is my friend John, he's uh, with uh, Video Mojo, dot, 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 you know, here's his podcast. If I was just writing that to my friend Shahara, I might say, I really want you to know John or Shahara, meet John, right? I would because I'm writing to one person, I'm writing to my friend. So write your subject lines from that viewpoint because inside the inbox, that's all we're trying to do. First, we've got followers, right? We get them on our email list, we turn them into friends. And once you have a list full of friends, you can have a list full of customers. Uh, speaking of frameworks, that's my email staircase, follower, friend, customer. So write your subject line from that vantage point of I'm just writing this to a friend. I'm just writing this to John. But chances are you've got a lot of Johns on your list, so it's going to be applicable to everyone. And the last thing I'll say is to John's point about me saying, oh, this is a little too YouTube SEO-esque. I just meant that the inbox, again, is not serving SEO. You're not, you know, you're not writing to YouTube. You're not writing to Google. You're writing to a friend. And so your subject lines uh, should be that way. So instead of saying my top five for X, Y, Z, you might say, here's my next YouTube video or, you know, check this out. Or uh, have you ever thought about X, Y, Z just made you a video, something like that. Does yeah, that make I sense, John? I mean, Is that helpful? It, it, 
It totally makes sense. And it's, it's just a reminder. I mean, I'm talking all the time. People that follow me know that it's about being human. But you're reminding me to really kind of settle down and be even more human. Let's talk about another strategy. One of the things that I frankly have not done a good job with over the years is a welcome sequence. And for those that are new to email marketing, well, may, Liz, you're the expert. Why don't you explain what is a welcome sequence? And I think there's some common mistakes, if I'm not mistaken, that you point out. Is that correct? Of course. I love to point out mistakes. I'm a little bossy, according to some people. <laughs> um, so Go for it. <laughs> the welcome sequence yeah, the welcome sequence is just what it sounds. It's a sequence of emails that welcome a new subscriber onto your email list. Some people call it a nurture sequence, an onboarding sequence, all of those things are the same. So you've got your YouTube video, you say, hey, like and subscribe. And you know, if you want this download, you know, join my email list over here, right? We've all seen that happen. When you download the freebie, you normally get a follow-up series, a welcome sequence guiding people into, into and onto your email list, right? And so I suggest just a few emails that what we've already talked about that includes your personality, your vision, and your values in them. Now going back to the subject line thing, when you do your welcome sequence properly, when you do it justice, that subject line later, like I was talking about, isn't as important as the from line. The welcome sequence itself makes that from line really important. Because you're sharing your personality, your vision, your values, suddenly I'm like, oh, I like John. I, I jive with that personality. I love video, but yeah, I tend to be too uptight. John's going to help me loosen up a bit because I know that's, you know, that's his vision for me. Those are his values. That's in his personality, right? And so the next time John emails me, sure, I'm going to look at that subject line, right? But I'm looking at the from line. Oh yeah, John, I remember him. I just joined up, you know, I just joined after listening to his podcast. I just, I saw him on YouTube and, you know, I liked his freebie or whatever, right? So it's that from line and that welcome sequence, again, showcasing your personality, your vision and your values is really going to help that from line stay Stand out. Oh, that's Liz Wilcox. I wonder what she has to say, right? And John, when he and I were talking, it was because he was in a welcome sequence of mine. He hit reply. We started talking and now I'm on his podcast, right? Like that all came that's from true. a welcome sequence. So the welcome sequence is really, really powerful stuff. Awesome. I love it. I, and I want to back up one more and this is very self-serving, I admit, but as long as I've got you, Liz, you know, so I've been doing the Video Mojo Creativity Sandbox and that framework has come into a new clarity. It's taken a new level as a result of doing it. And so I've also not done a good job over the years of even having a freebie. I've had a basically an existing list and I'm looking forward to finally growing it over the next year. But I, so I've decided to do a free course on my framework as a freebie. You know, how, how does that, I mean, basically, I guess I want to take those values that are in the framework and continue them through the welcome sequence and have that be an integrated whole. Is that correct? Yeah, there's lots of ways that you can do your freebie, your lead magnet and your welcome sequence. I just want to guide anyone who's you know wondering about what they should offer as a as a free download or a free course is remember to go back to your vision what is your vision for people and think of that as the degree they're getting from you university right at Liz Wilcox University when you walk across that stage at the end of our time together you're gonna graduate with a degree of making money with email with John John what would you say that your degree is what's that big vision you it's, have for your it's really clients joyous, and students? creative freedom it's joyous greater freedom, having people express themselves through video, playing with AI and and uh, and connecting in just the way we're connecting. I mean, I, I do video mojo because it's fun for me to meet people and talk to fun, cool people like you, Liz. Yeah. So it sounds like John is saying, you know, with the right tools and mindset, you're going to have fun with video and be able to connect uh, with your ideal audience. Right. That's his vision for you. That's the it's degree even, he's I, handing I, you. I, I want to. So, yes, please do. So the creativity, it's the Video Mojo Creativity Sandbox. And this Creativity Sandbox gives people a breakthrough in expressing their creativity, whether it's in music like this keyboard that I've got behind me or sketching or art or poetry or essays or emails, whatever, whatever your creative calling is that you're not acting on, 
people use the structure of the sandbox to be able to be more joyful and to express themselves more creatively. I love so that. So he's going to help it. you, you know, unlock and unleash your creativity, whatever your modality is, right? Through this framework he's got. So I love that. And so his freebie makes sense because now, like, if that's our degree, like, I've unleashed my creativity, I've used his framework, and now, you know, I'm the most creative I've ever been with this modality. What's that first day of class look like? That's your freebie. That's your lead magnet. What do they need? to know on the first day of class. So John's got, you know, this course on, you know, on his framework that makes sense. So totally, right? And for me, mine is, you know, make money with email. So my welcome sequence templates, because I think that's the first thing you need to get started, are my freebies. So think about your vision for your clients or students or readers, listeners, etc. What does that first day of class look like? What do they really need to know? That is going to be an excellent lead magnet for you. Very cool. One of the themes that we're going to have ongoing here in Video Mojo, at least in the near term, is around storytelling. My friend Michael Cass uh, has been expressing something called ethical ethical storytelling that I'm still understanding, but he says in general, that concept is misunderstood. And I understand that you have a different idea and you don't teach storytelling as hot a buzzword as it is. Why is that? And what is it that you do teach people? Or have we just covered that in terms of just be self, be more human? Does it all come back to that every time? Or is there something different around storytelling? Yeah, well, I love John just said about being yourself and releasing your creativity with whatever modality that happens to be. I I am a firm believer that you know, you didn't get into the game of video or business or whatever because you're an excellent storyteller. Yes, humans are storytellers, but a lot of us aren't very good at it. You know, I'm talking to you like Uncle Dan from Thanksgiving, right? We tend to talk in circles. You know, we can't get to the point. You know, we all know those storytellers, right? Uh, storytelling is an art that you have to practice. And so a lot of us get really overwhelmed when marketers tell us, oh, we have to tell stories and we have to do open loop and closed loop and suddenly we've got our 10th grade English teacher on our back talking about five paragraphs and don't you dare say anything at the top or I'm sorry at the bottom that you didn't say at the top etc right and so with email again it's just a human to human connection and so instead of trying to tell stories just give little personal updates right it's a newsletter not a novel chances are if you don't have time to write it your people don't have time to read it. So give, it, give a quick personal update that is just something that you've done since the last time you emailed them. You know, oh, I met up with my buddy John and we recorded a podcast. I took my dog for a walk. My refrigerator broke and that's been you know what to try to fix, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Just something that, again, shows off maybe a little bit of that personality you have, shows you off as a person and shows, shows that you really want to connect. And that's what storytelling is all about. It's about connecting. But within email marketing itself, you don't always have to tell stories. And chances are like people will respect you when you keep it shorter, when you get to the point, when you say, hey, my fridge broke, but you know, I sat down to write to you because it's really important. I help you uh, get your mojo back when it comes to your creativity. Anyway, uh, you know, I just uploaded a new YouTube video. It's all about, you know, how I got back into music a few years ago um, and what I've learned since. Hope you enjoy it. Skip to the five minute mark to hear me playing hot cross buns or something, you know, goodbye, John, right? I just wrote his newsletter in what, 20 seconds. It can be that simple. So again, personal update, segue into what you want to really talk about and then get out of there. That's what I believe you should do with email versus storytelling. Well, and that certainly speaks to the last question I was going to ask you, which is that, you know, getting it done, because I think that, you know, one of the things that's been my biggest challenge is being consistent. And if we can make it a little more bite size, and I I totally agree that shorter is better because people have such limited attention span. I guess the one thing that I am not clear about is that when you talk about the broken refrigerator example, who really cares? I mean, I, I'm always, I, the old marketing school is what's in it for them, right? I always want to be giving value and have something that's useful and, you know, makes it worth them opening the email. They don't, my refrigerator repair story has nothing to do with that. So where am I, what am I missing there? Yeah. Oh, God. 
Gosh, I love that John just brought this up. And actually, at the time of this recording, my last uh, template in my membership was a what's in it for me email. Because uh, this, this seems to be a recurring theme right now uh, in my life. And so what's in it for them to hear about your refrigerator is that connection piece, that human to human experience, right? And it's it's really about just showing them that you are relatable. Now, I will say that John said the refrigerator story, but note, I didn't try to tell a story about the refrigerator. I just stated as a fact that my refrigerator is broken, that's causing me stress, but anyway, I'm writing you anyway. And here's what that does. Remember, we're following the email staircase, follower, friend, customer. How do we get people from follower to friend, we just have to do three things. Number one, show we're invested, right? Oh, I listened to this podcast. I am sitting down to write you, right? That shows you're invested in your reader. Number two, share in a relatable way. This is where the fridge thing comes in, right? This is not anything that's like, you know, going to help them solve their XYZ problems. Right, if I shared that, there's nothing about the refrigerator has anything to do with my vision for you, right? It's not gonna help you make money, but it is going to make me relatable right? Oh yeah, I remember my refrigerator broke too, right? Going back to that personality piece we talked about at the top of the hour, uh, you know, me loving the 90s, how does that help you? Well, it doesn't accept that it sh- it makes me relatable. Even if you hate the 90s, you know, you're suddenly relating to me in some way. You know, we all have that shared experience. We all have the shared experience of a broken appliance or something going wrong in the household. So suddenly you're relating to me when I share that my refrigerator is broken and it's annoying me, right? But that's the difference between what I teach and what a lot of email marketers will teach you about storytelling. I agree with John, who cares? What's in it for me? I don't want a whole story about your refrigerator bro- breaking and suddenly you're trying to teach me a lesson out of it. You can tell me your refrigerator is broken. Yep, I get it. I'm having those little micro connections with you each week until that trust is there. So the last thing um, in order to turn someone into a friend is just to stay top of mind, which spoiler alert, When you show how invested you are in that vision for folks, when you share how relatable you are, staying top of mind actually becomes pretty simple. Yeah, it's great. I mean, and the piece of it, the, you know, full disclosure, the other thing that I'm really working on with my video mojo is to get back into consistent TikTok. And I've heard similar advice of just make it a thread in your life, not like a big event that then you have to craft it and craft the hook and then, you know, and then it ends up taking a whole lot more time. I look forward to using our relationship and using your community to get me to communicate more in the kind of way that you're talking about because I have so many insights and a video that I watched on YouTube with Ali Abdal last night that I think is really kind of profound and things that I want to share like that that don't quite make it out even as much as I post on social media. I just can do do it more in a John Leland kind of way and thank you for the inspiration for that and thank you for coming Liz. So if you want more information LizWilcox.com right? L-I-Z-W-I-L-C-O-X that's easy. Anything else? Any other coordinates or invitations you have for people? Yeah well I'd, I'd love for you to get going with your email so just like John said you can go to LizWilcox.com. In the top right hand corner there's a hot pink button you can't miss it. There's an entire welcome sequence already written for you for you to take and make your own. There are three newsletter email examples uh, directly from my $9 a month membership. One to show you how to get people to click, another how to get people to reply, and a third how to get people to buy directly from your emails. And we talked a lot about subject lines. You're also going to get 52 subject lines all for free. LizWilcox.com Writing from scratch totally sucks. Let me do it for you. It's fantastic. And you're, and you're, you know, I really appreciate how generous you are. Is there, and the last question I guess I would ask business wise you don't charge a lot for your products and for your subscription, but it's working for you as a business and you've found another model where you can be more inclusive and make it available to more people. And that's working, I, I, I presume. Any other insights about that process? 
Yeah, well, number one, Netflix did it, right? They started off as, what, 7 or $9? And I thought to myself, well, Netflix had a lot of overhead, and they needed a lot of people to, you know, to make a profit, to turn a profit. I don't have that much overhead, and I don't need that many users to turn a profit. And so, yeah, of course I'm going to go low cost. That makes sense for me and my values. Um, and number two, I just have a very long-term vision. I know that I'm going to be in business for decades. Decades, um, and so I don't have to have things happen quickly. Um, I just need to get them moving. And so that's, uh, you know, a little bit of mindset behind, you know, how I'm able to create and grow a brand with low uh, ticket products. Awesome. Thank you for what you're doing, Liz. And I look forward to getting to know you better. And I'm sure my emails are going to be better for the process. Well, I can't wait for everyone to get started with email. Thanks for having me.